Hello and welcome to Term 2 Prepping for Success Enrollment 101. The Prepping for Success series is getting key parts of information out to students at key points in the academic calendar. I'd also like to acknowledge the Bedigal people who are the traditional custodians of the land here at Kensington campus and pay my respects to elders past, present and future. So without further ado, I will pass over to Cassandra for today's session. Hi everyone, thanks for joining the session today. So my name is Cassandra and I am a student advisor here at UNSW. So our aim today uh, is for you to come away from this session feeling confident, understanding the key terminology used at UNSW, navigating through the handbook, UNSW timetable, resources and UNSW web pages used for enrollment, and also importantly, feeling confident enrolling, creating your timetable and class registering at UNSW. I'll also discuss the services that are available to students that help with progression through your program. Um, I'll run through the presentation and then we will open up a question and answer at the end. Um, so let's begin next slide if that's okay. Uh, so I suppose the first step in the enrollment process at UNSW is through the personalised offer. Students newly commencing at UNSW will have received a personalised offer, so each of you should have seen this already. If you haven't seen this, I recommend going back into your emails or contacting the UNSW Nucleus, who are the first point of contact for all enrollment and program questions, and they can resend it to you. This offer is really useful because it contains recommendations for choosing courses in your first year based on your program you're in and the major you want to undertake if a major is in your program requirements. So for example here for the Bachelor of Science you can see based on the biology major the student is looking to declare the recommended courses for their first year are BIOS 1101, Math 1041 and so on. So this student will be able to work from this information to create an enrollment plan based on which term each course is offered and the course requirements. But we'll look into this a little bit later in the presentation. So I think now is a good opportunity to step back and explain some of the fundamental terminology you will get familiar with during your time at UNSW. So your program is what you have been offered at UNSW and what you are commencing now. It refers to the set of requirements, courses or research, etc., which you are admitted to. So a program is what you are currently in. A degree is what you are awarded upon completion of your program. So during your time at UNSW, you will refer to your Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Commerce, etc., as your program. A major, which can also be known as a specialization, is a specific sequence of study in a discipline within your program. So majors require students to take an approved set of courses at different levels and units of credit. More than one major can be completed for some programs um, and to understand if your program requires a major and what majors are offered, refer to your handbook um, and I'll, rec I'll cover how to uh, navigate the handbook in a few slides. A minor is a specialised sequence of study and is smaller in size and scope than a major. These are not always required, um, but it sometimes is a nice complement to your major. Again, search on your handbook for information specific to your program. So a course is the individual sequence of learning and teaching. So you will enrol into courses each term and these combine to complete your major and program. A core course is a compulsory course within a program and must be completed um, to meet the requirements of your program. For example, in your program, and this will change between programs, so check the handbook for details, you may have a combination of core courses, faculty specific electives, free electives, which means courses taken from any faculty, including your program faculty, uh, and general education courses which are courses that must be outside of your faculty. Uh, next slide, thank you. So the Welcome to Enrollment page is a great step in understanding the enrollment process. 
It contains links to the faculty progression plans, and I will talk about these a little bit further in the session. It also contains a step-by-step -step guide for how to enroll and class register for classes. As you may already know, enrollment at UNSW is a two-step process, and I will discuss enrolling into courses and class registering just a little bit later. Uh, next slide, thank you. So there are many different class types depending on the courses you are studying. For example, science programs may have labs, whereas design-based courses may have studios. Common class type codes are shown just on the left here. In this example, Arts 1690 has a lecture and a tutorial. When completing class registration, you must select all class types required for this course, and the system actually won't let you complete the registration process without doing this. Uh, next slide, thank you. So the UNSW handbook is your ultimate guide for your program, including your program requirements and rules, um, which are really important to be aware of, as well as information on majors and courses offered at UNSW. So the information provided here is up to date and accurate for the current year um, and information can change um, in future years. For example, which term a course is offered can change between years. And next slide, thank you. To view the requirements of your program, you can search the program name or code. The code is four digits. For example, a Bachelor of Science is 3970, that's the code. To view a course, you can search by the code, for example, Arts1240, or by the name, for example, Concepts of Europe, which is Arts1240. You can filter your search fields um, by faculty, course level, for example, level one, two, three, and so on. Um, and just a note on that, the level of the courses can be confirmed through the course code. So Arts1240 is level one because the first digit is a one. Uh, Laws2277 is a level two course because the first digit is two and so on. So you can filter the search by term offering or delivery mode as well. Uh, this is really useful to find courses that interest you or that satisfy an elective or general education. For example, in term two, you want to satisfy your free elective requirement and you are interested in computer science. So you can narrow your search to find all first year computer science courses offered in term two. You can then have a look at the course page to see if A, it sparks your interest and B, to make sure that you meet the prerequisites if there are any. So um, just on that, a prerequisite is a course that must be successfully completed prior to undertaking another course. Uh, next slide, thank you. So when you go into a course page, this is where you can find more details, including uh, included are links to the course outline. This includes information on assessments, textbooks required, or who the course convener is. Uh, so the course convener is the academic staff member with overall responsibility for coordinating the teaching of a particular course. They are generally the main contact for any issues or specific questions to the course during the term, and their contact email is generally found in the course outline or on the UNSW timetable page. The course convener may also be your lecturer or tutor, but often this is another academic. Um, so you'll get to know your tutor in the first few weeks of tutes, labs or seminars. So it's really important to know that you must follow the handbook of the year you commenced your program at UNSW. The reason for this is that occasionally the requirements for a program will change over time and we don't want to keep moving the goalposts for students. So you can change the handbook year in the top right down just there. So the top right drop down button. Uh, next slide, thank you. So creating your timetable. You can view the timetable in two ways. So you can visit www.timetable.unsw.edu.au or you can visit the handbook page for a specific course, i.e. Math 1251, and click View Timetable website on the right-hand side. 
on this page, you see, you can see which teaching periods the course is offered. So for example, Math 1251 only shows term two, meaning it's only offered in term two this year. You can also see the staff contact. So for this example, it's Associate Professor J.M. Cress. So if you want to find his contact details, you can just Google Professor J.M. Cress at UNSW um, and you'll be able to find the contact details on the page there. So this page also shows the census date for the term which the course is offered. So for this example, the 27th of June 2021, as well as most importantly, the class times. So key things to pay attention to for complicated looking timetables like this one is to note that there is one lecture and a multi multitude of tutorial one and tutorial two. So the lecture also has multiple sessions. So a student taking this course will have a lecture on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. The weeks which the specified class is held will also be noted on the right hand side. So there are two tutorials for this course. If you see this, you know that you will need to select a class time for both. Um, for example, tutorial one of two, 4895, looks to have seats available and is held on Tuesday 12 to 1. Um, throughout the term, obviously excluding Flex Week. And tutorial two of two, 4889, is held on Thursday 3 to 5 p.m. So tip here, if you can see that a class is open or full, but my UNSW is indicating otherwise, Note that the timetable website does not show live numbers for class capacity. So my UNSW is the most accurate, um, but for a better indication of class numbers and capacities, you can visit the class utilization website, which I will get to. Uh, next slide, thank you. Okay, thank you. So the notes section is used to communicate any important details about the course. So for example, if there is a mandatory field trip or information about how the course is delivered. So for example, face-to-face, -face, dual mode or online only, um, or information about the class capacities. So this screenshot shows a, a different example of how a lecture may have multiple lectures throughout the week and also a web section. Um, so the web section will not have a class time and this as uh, this is a component that's fully run through Moodle, um, so it will also not show up on your timetable. Uh, next slide, thank you. So this is the class utilization page. It's updated every 12 hours which is useful for keeping track of how many places are remaining in a course. So to navigate this page, first find the four letter code for the course you're trying to enroll in and select the link for the term you want to take it in. You will then see all of the courses offered in that term with the same four letter code. Then you can select the four letter four digit code of the course you are searching. So as an example, COM1140 shown on the right will list all of the classes for this course. You will see similar information as shown on the timetable website, but with the addition of where the class is. So if it's online or a physical location and whether the class has plenty of space. So if it's got, if it's got plenty of space, it will show as green, um, or if it's approaching full capacity, it will show as orange, or if it's full, it will show as red. So whether you choose to use the timetable website or the class utilization page, is up to preference, but we do advise to use them in conjunction when planning out your timetable. Uh, next slide, thank you. So enrolling into courses, as I said, is a two step process. The first step is selecting your courses for the year you want to enroll in. Courses will fill up quickly, so I recommend that you enroll into courses for that the entire year where you can um, to reserve your place um, as you can always change your enrollment before the enrollment deadline, which is week one of each term. So first, log in to the update enrollment section on my UNSW. Then select your program for the upcoming year from the list and click update enrollment. If you are a new student and you can see your program details, but you can't click update enrollment, just make sure that you've completed part one and part two of your offer acceptance. 
Uh, next slide, thank you. So the easiest way to find courses is by using the search button. Here, you can search for the course code, which has four letters and four numbers. You can refer to your personalized offer page or the handbook to find the course code for your program. Once you have found the course, ensure you select the courses you want by ticking the box, then click select courses. Your select courses will appear in your enrollment basket. To confirm your enrollment, uh, your course enrollment, select the courses by ticking the select box and click submit enrollment request. You will need to click through the confirmation windows uh, to confirm your course enrollment. If you have enrolled correctly, you will see one green tick under enrolled slash registered and an orange triangle advising that you have not yet class registered. Uh, next slide, thank you. Class registration. So this is part two of the course enrollment process. It involves picking your class times and building your class timetable. So at the start of the year, you're able to enroll into your courses for the whole year, but you can't actually build your timetable for each term until class registration begins for that term. So each student has their own unique class registration open date, um, and that date and time will be emailed to you by your student email. Once your class registration is open, you can register for your classes and build your timetable. Do this by going into your enrollment basket and clicking select classes button, which you will see located underneath the search bar. Uh, next slide, thank you. The select classes button will lead you to the page where you can build your timetable. Choose your class times by highlighting the class that you want on the left hand column. When you press on a tutorial or lecture or other class type, it will highlight grey and a grey box will appear on the timetable at the appropriate time. Sometimes the class will highlight on the left hand side, but no box will appear on the timetable. This is generally because the course is online and doesn't have an actual class time to attend. In this case, as long as the class is highlighted on the left hand side, you can proceed to confirm your enrollment. So you can build your own timetable here and pick all of the classes you want, or if you're not fussed about the class times, you can select auto timetable button and the system will generate a clash free timetable for you. Once you're happy with the timetable, um, press select classes in the bottom right uh, and proceed to confirming your enrollment. Uh, next slide. After clicking the select classes button on the timetable page, you will be directed back to the enrollment basket to conf confirm your selections. Uh, the page here displays a summary of the classes that you have chosen to register in. If you're satisfied with your selection, press confirm enrollment to complete the enrollment. If there are no issues with your enrollment, you will get a page confirming that you have successfully enrolled. If there are errors, then a message will pop up telling you that you need to be uh, you need to resolve these errors before you can complete your class registration. Uh, next slide, thank you. So. If you are trying to enroll or class register for a class and it is full, then you will be able to join a waitlist. This is essentially a queue that you can join so that if a student drops out of the course before the end of week one, you'll be able to join. If a course or class is full, uh, you will find out the time of trying to confirm your enrollment or registration request. Instead of getting a success message, you will receive a message telling you that the course, course or class is full, but waitlisting is available. You should confirm that you want to join the waitlist if you wish to join or go back and select another course or class time if you do not. Next slide, thank you. Make sure to visit this page. Um, so it's our waitlisting webpage for detailed guides for joining a course or class waitlist and frequently asked questions on these processes. So you can find this by just searching UNSW waitlisting. Um, so in this, there are PDF guides to show you screenshots similar to what you'll find on your My UNSW page. Uh, next slide, thank you. 
So just some waitlisting tips and tricks. The first one is to use the swap function. If you want guaranteed enrollment in 18 units of credit, which is the typical maximum units of credit per term, you should choose to swap one of your enrolled courses for a waitlist course. If you do not choose swap and you have 18 units of credit enrolled, but then add yourself to a waitlist, the automatic waitlisting will not enroll you. Uh, the second is combined and separated waitlist. Choosing a combined waitlist means that you will not be moved off the waitlist until both the course enrollment and the class requested have space available. If the course has space, uh, if the course has space become available, but the class you registered is still full, you will not be enrolled. Whereas a combined waitlist, uh, sorry, a combined waitlist makes sense if there is only one class time that works for you, but you're already enrolled into 18 units of credit and only want to be swapped if space in the waitlisted class becomes available. If you are flexible with class times, um, but need to take the course, a separated waitlist makes more sense in your situation. So the next is watch your student email closely. So any notifications will be sent to your student email um, and it will include instructions of who to contact if necessary. The next is having a backup. Joining a waitlist does not guarantee that you will be enrolled. So we recommend that you continue to search for an alternative course in the case that you are still on the waitlist close to the start of term. And also check the handbook. So ensure that you meet the conditions of enrollment listed on the handbook, uh, whether that's program requirements, prerequisites, et cetera, um, or else you will not be enrolled even if space becomes available. So if you're unsure of what something means in the waitlist process, you can hover over the symbols and they will expand to give you further information. Uh, next slide, thank you. Once you have enrolled in class registered, you can view your class timetable, which shows the times and locations for each class this term. So if you head to MyUNSW, update enrollment, course enrollment, and then view timetable. You can download your timetable as a file and you can import it into your favorite calendar apps. Um, your timetable shows individual weeks of the term. Um, this is important to note that your schedule may change each week. So it's important to check this regularly. Uh, next, thank you. So if you come across issues with enrollment or you don't know how to enroll, register for classes, join a waitlist or find your timetable, you can visit these links below where you can find detailed steps, uh, step by step guides, including screenshots and answers to frequently asked questions. Uh, next slide, thank you. So your program authority is the managing faculty and main contact for specific inquiries about your program. So to find out who the program authority is for your program, you can search in your UNSW handbook and it's on the right hand side, just highlighted there. Uh, next slide, thank you. So if you're in a dual program, for example, here in the Bachelor of Commerce and Science, the managing faculty or the overarching faculty responsible for your program is the business school and they should be contacted first. Your program authority governs the rules of things like program leave or overloading, um, but regardless for enrollment and program requirement advice, you can speak to a representative from either of your faculty student services um, for guidance. So to contact your program authority, you can call the Nucleus or submit a web form online. Uh, next slide, thank you. Progression plans, also known as sample programs or degree templates, show examples of how to structure your program. It helps with knowing what to enroll in and when based on your program and major and also based on when the courses are offered. Here, for example, um, here are some examples of program plans for different faculties. For example, for the Bachelor of Science with a major in mathematics, you can see that the program consists of 60 units of credit, 10 courses of core courses listed in the dark blue, uh, 48 units of science electives, 24 units of free electives and 12 units of general education. This adds together to create the 144 units of, requ of the required program. So these are really useful for planning the entirety of your program 
and I recommend saving your progression plan and ticking or crossing off courses as you complete them. This way you will know exactly what you've completed and exactly what you have remaining and you can plan accordingly. Uh, next slide, thank you. So throughout the term, there are a number of useful dates that you should make sure that you're across. Um, just a reminder that the university is strict when it comes to deadlines and there's rarely sp uh, space for flexibility. So the onus is really on you to make sure that you're aware of any upcoming deadlines. The good news is, is that we send out reminders to students for most upcoming dates via email. However, it is best to keep across these dates yourself as well in case you miss any emails. So there are a few tools you can use to help make sure that you don't miss any key dates. So these are term planners. So these are available for each term and can be downloaded. They show all key dates such as enrollment deadlines, census date, exam periods, etc. So I recommend printing one of these um, to keep on your desk at home or your desktop and adding your assignment dates and exam dates so that you can keep organized during the term. You can course also keep up to date by checking your key dates website. One important thing to note on this website is the different term periods. So UNSW has three ter main terms, term one, term two, and term three. However, some programs have term dates that differ slightly from the main terms. They may be listed as term 1A, for example. So you should note if you are in one of these non-standard terms, you may have slightly different enrollment and census dates. So just be careful when checking it on the website to make sure that you're looking at the correct one. If you are following the main terms, also be careful to look at the right term. So for example, it's term one, not term 1A. Uh, next slide, thank you. So here are the most important deadlines for you to be across. So the first is the enrollment deadline. This is the last date to enroll into courses. It's always Sunday at the end of week one. So except in very rare circumstances, you will not be allowed to enroll into any new cl classes for, for that term after this date. So this generally means that you, cannot, uh, you also cannot swap tutorials after this date. So although the deadline is on a Sunday, it's best to try and do any alterations prior to the end of the business week. And um, the reason for this is the nuclear staff and enrollment helplines aren't open on the weekends. The census date. So the census date is always Sunday of week four of each term. So we call this the try before you buy date. If you want to drop a course without having to pay for it and without having it recorded on your transcript, you must drop before this date. It's also the last day by, by which you can choose to take program leave or defer your program. So applications for leave or deferral must be submitted before this date. The census date is the date at which you commit to paying for your course as well. So for those students that are deferring their fees to HEX, this means that after this date, the fee deferral will happen. So you'll notice on your fee statement in my UNSW account that there is an amount owing on your account until the date uh, in week four. After the census date, the amount owing will disappear as the debt gets transferred to your HEX loan. Students paying up front should ensure they pay by this date or else there will be a block on your account. So it's generally also a good idea to take stock during week four of term um, just to see how you're going in the course. If you're really struggling or behind or you don't think you can really or if you're not sure that you can complete the course, then this is the time to drop. Again, it's generally best to drop the course before the end of the working week as the nuclear staff staff are available on the weekends. If you drop a course, um, you are able to enroll again in another term um, and this may be a requirement if it's a core course. The next is the deadline to drop without academic penalty. If you miss the census date, but you still want to drop a course without it being recorded on your transcript, then drop before this date. It's always Sunday of week six. So this is called the deadline to drop without academic penalty. You still have to pay for the course, but it won't be recorded on your transcript and it will be effectively the, as the same as if you didn't take the course at all. The next is the late drop. This is called the drop with academic penalty. Uh, it means dropping after the drop without academic penalty, but before the last day of teaching. 
So you will be financially, financially liable for the course and it will appear on your transcript as an AW grade, which means academic withdrawal grade. However, it won't be included in your, the calculation of your WAM at UNSW. But because it's calculated as a fail grade, it might affect your application for future programs at other unis um, as they may use it to calculate your GPA. Uh, and it is also included in the calculation of your academic standing at UNSW. The IPT application open. So for students wanting to transfer to another program, they can do this via our internal program transfer service. You can submit, you can only submit your application to transfer between certain dates. So during these dates, a portal becomes available to you in your MyUNSW page. You can view the dates that these portals open for each term on UNSW IPT webpage. The easy way, easiest way to locate this is to Google UNSW IPT and follow the first link. Class registration opens by appointment for, for T3. So this is the date that class registration begins for the next term. So remember, students can enroll into courses for the entire year, but they can only register for their classes one term ahead. The uni staggers class registration to prioritize students that are closer to completing their degree. So your appointment date will be sometime after the class registration open date. You can view the exact dates and time of your class registration appointment on my UNSW account. It is listed under enrollment appointment. So it's good to be across your class registration appointment time so that you can be as early as possible so as to not miss out on the classes you want because they can fill up quite quickly. The final exam timetable released. So this is pretty self-explanatory. However, it's good to keep across. Um, on this date, your personalized exam timetable will be appeared on your MyUNSW page. And release of results. So all results are released on this date for the term. That they emailed your email accounts and also posted on MyUNSW. So you can view them from this date in MyUNSW by viewing your academic statement. It's worth noting that if you have any outstanding fees or block on your account, you won't be able to view your grades until this is settled. If you get a result that you think is wrong or you want to appeal it, make sure to take action as soon as possible. So the first step is to contact your course convener to query it. If you wish to appeal the result, you need to submit a review of results within five days. This request is submitted through the Nucleus web forms. If you're planning to order documents that reflect your grades from a, that particular term, just ensure that you order it after the release of results, or if you order it before, you must select the box that says process after release of results. Uh, next slide, thank you. So the Student Hub is your first point of contact for most administrative or enrollment issues. You can um, make most requests via the web forms portal, it is important to make your requests as early as possible as they can take some time to process. If your request type isn't listed, submit and ask a question form, which is at the bottom, um, and direct it to the student hub. Uh, next slide, thank you. So UNSW emails students on a regular basis. These emails are targeted and personal to you, so do ensure that you read every email. We will remind you if you've missed an important step like enrollment or registration and also send student newsletters which will alert you to upcoming important dates such as census or IPT. They'll also alert you to fun things like activities or events. Uh, next step, thank you. So I have discussed the majority of these terms already in this presentation, but I've included these here for your reference when we do share the slides. Um, but you can also find the full list of terminology by searching UNSW terminology online. Uh, next slide, thank you. So a common question that I get is what a WAM is. So your WAM stands for Weighted Average Mark and is calculated by multiplying the mark obtained for each relevant result by the units of credit of the particular course, um, adding the products and then dividing it by the total number of units of credit for the relevant courses. So courses that have no numerical mark and have letter grades are not calculated towards a WAM. 
However, it may affect your academic standing. So you can refer to the UNSW grade definitions for more information. Uh, next slide, thank you. So thank you everyone for listening. This concludes the presentation side of the session. We'll now open up to any questions that you would like to ask. Um, so please submit them in the Q&A and I'll hand over to Paul to, to read them out. Thank you, uh, Cassandra. Uh, great presentation. We've just got a, a question that's popped in. In terms of getting um, advice for enrollment, in the first instance, where would you go? Would you go to the nucleus or the faculty first? So the recommendation would definitely be contact the nucleus. So within the nucleus, we have advisors from each faculty, so they can give specific targeted advice for your program. Um, so you can either book an appointment to sit with an advisor one on one um, to discuss any questions that you might have. Um, you can also call the nucleus or you can submit a web form. So these will all be directed to advisors specific to your faculty so they can give you um, accurate and specific advice to you. Great, thank you so much. Um, where can a student go to get uh, information about census date? So if you'd like to stay in touch with the key dates, you can just head to the UNSW key dates website. It lists all of the important dates such as census date um, and enrollment deadlines and exam periods. So that would be the, the main one. And then I would also recommend um, downloading the term planner. So these are really useful for visualizing uh, exactly what happens throughout your term. And it also includes things like census date, enrollment deadlines, um, exam periods, flex week and things like that. And then you can also edit the term planner to include um, any assignment deadlines uh, specific to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, OK, question that's come in. So when it comes to uh, specific advice for uh, international students, um, particularly around their visas, um, where would you suggest that they go and um, discuss that? Yeah, of course. So the International Student Experience Unit, they are the team that can give specific uh, advice on your COE and visas. They sit at the nucleus as well. So you can pop in um, and uh, request an appointment, a drop-in service, and you can sit with an International Student Experience Advisor. Um, and you can also, they also offer virtual face-to-face -face appointments as well. So you can log in at a specific time and have a one-on-one -on -one appointment via uh, Teams or Zoom. Awesome, thank you so much. Just uh, checking. Feel free everybody to uh, pop through some uh, questions. We're uh, more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, Quick question here, how does uh, census date impact uh, the courses that you've enrolled in? So the census date, which is Sunday of week four, it's always Sunday of week four. This is the deadline to drop a course without academic or financial penalty. So if you're um, in the first four weeks of your term and you realize um, perhaps you're behind and you don't think you can pass the course or it's, um, it's actually not interesting, it was an elective and you're actually not quite interested in the course, you can drop this course anytime before Sunday of week four. Um, you won't be charged for the course and it also won't appear on your transcript. So it's like you never took the course at all. So it's really, um, as we as we said, it's the, the try before you buy. Perfect, great answer. So in terms of enrollment, where can you find your uh, timetable of all of the courses you're enrolled in? So if you go to my UNSW um, and then into your course enrollment, there is a button there that you can view your timetable um, and this opens your timetable for each week of the term. Um, so it is important to note that your like your lectures or your tutorials can change for each uh, each week. So it's good to check you know, every Sunday that you're um, the, the week ahead, uh, check the, like the time for, for the week ahead. Perfect, thank you so much. 
And in the instance that you did want to withdraw from a course, how do you go about doing that? So you can go into your My UNSW um, just as you would enroll a course, there is also the option to drop. So there is a button um, when you go to your enrollment uh, for the term, there's a swap button and there's also a drop button. So you can just follow the prompts to drop the course um, and it will lead you through the steps. Um, but just make sure that if you do drop a course um, after the enrollment deadline, which is Sunday of week one, um, if you drop it by accident, call the nuclear straight away um, because if you drop it, uh, and then wait more than 24 hours, you won't be able to enroll back into the course. So just make sure before you drop that you are sure that you'd like to. Um, but if it is an accident, just call the nucleus or come into the nucleus as soon as possible to let us know. Brilliant. And in terms of uh, paying for the courses, uh, what's the process for payment? Yeah, of course. So you can go into your My UNSW and you can view your fee statement. Um, once you view your fee statement, you can follow the prompts to pay. So if you're paying up front, you can just follow the prompts um, for the steps to pay. Um, if you are um, a HEC student, you will need to still pay your student amenities fee if you, um, unless you defer that as well. So if you need to pay your student amenities fee, you go into your fee statement and this will see a combination of your fee um, your course fees and your student amenities fees and you can just select to pay the amount. Um, I believe it's 113 each term. You can just pay that amount and follow the steps and that will automatically go towards your student amenities fees um, rather than your uh, student course fees. If you are a fee paying student, then you can just follow the links and pay the whole thing um, in one go. But it's on my UNSW and then you go into your fee statement. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, Beatrice, thanks for your uh, question. Uh, where can I find a, my personalised offer if you can't find it in your mailbox? If you can't find it, um, contact the Nucleus and we can resend it to you. So if you just like to call the Nucleus and I'll put the contact page up on the next slide um, and just ask for your personalised offer page, uh, we can easily resend it to your email. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, in terms of finding out the grades for um, the courses you're enrolled in, how would you go about looking for them? So after the release of results date, you can view your grades, um, so your overall term grades by downloading your academic statement. Um, throughout the term, if you receive grades for your assessments, these will all be communicated to you by the course convener. So whether they're posted on Moodle um, or emailed to you, it's all, it will all be um, up to the course convener throughout the term, but you'll receive that information um, as you go. Fantastic, thanks so much. Just wondering uh, if anyone's got any other questions. As a new student, how can I find uh, the Nucleus if I want enrollment advice? Yeah, of course. So our physical location is on level two of the library. So if you walk through the main library entrance, it's on the right here. And my actual background is what it looks like. So if you look for the Nucleus here, um, just walk in and there'll be a concierge to, to help you. Awesome. So you can walk in, you don't need to necessarily book an appointment. So to see an advisor specific to your faculty, I would highly recommend booking an appointment. Um, they can fill up for the day. Um, so if you just head to the UNSW Nucleus website, um, you can follow the links to book an appointment and you can select which faculty you'd like to speak with. If you've just got general fee advice, um, you can just pop in and ask to join the guided services website. Uh, sorry, the guided services queue and generally the queue isn't too long or if you need an ID, um, you can join the guided services queue as well. Uh, we also offer virtual face to face appointments if you can't come in, but you do need to book um, at least a day ahead and you will have a one on one appointment online uh, with an advisor. Um, via Teams, so Microsoft Teams. And you can also give us a call and you can select um, which faculty you'd like to speak with um, and you can ask the same sort of questions there. Excellent, thanks so much. Bit of a difficult question, but if somebody uh, was sick um, during term time for the courses that they were enrolled in and they missed a fair chunk, what would be uh, the process to try and rectify that? 
Yeah, of course. So this process is called special considerations. Um, so you need to submit a request either before. So for example, you have an exam and you're unwell. Um, you can either submit before the assessment um, or as, as soon as after. Um, and you need to provide medical documentation or it, depending on the circumstances. If the circumstances are outside of your control, for example, you're sick or if there's an incident, um, you just need to submit documentation to uh, for special considerations. This will go to the special considerations team and they will assess um, and then they will notify you of the outcome. So there are many different outcomes depending on the assessment, whether it's a class participation or the final exam, you'll be notified of what the outcome is. Um, so for example, the final exam, uh, UNSW offer supplementary exams. So if you're unwell or something happens for the exam period, um, you may be offered to sit a supplementary exam um, the next week or the, or the weeks after. But it is really important if you are unwell um, for a class or an assessment or really anything to su submit special considerations as soon as possible. Um, and I would highly recommend going to the UNSW special considerations website just to have a read of what is classified as um, circumstances beyond your control so that you know um, you, you have an idea of whether you'll be um, approved for it, provided that you um, submit the documentation. Thank you so much. Um, another great question. In terms of core courses, if they're not necessarily offered this year, what should you do in terms of applying for that course or looking for a substitution? So my recommendation would be to download the progression plan of your program so that you can um, map out the entirety of your program based of when the course is offered. So for example, if you're commencing in term two and you have a level one core course that's only offered in term one, you know that you'll need to take it next year um, and you can map out the remaining courses appropriately. Um, so for example, if uh, you've got a core course in term one and um, you, you can't you can't move on to a particular term two course, uh, sorry, a level two course until you complete that level one course, you can map out to make sure that you're um, you're only enrolling to that uh, level two course uh, next year after term two. Um, so it is a good idea at the start of your program, have a, a rough plan of when you'd like to take courses based on when they're offered and make sure that you meet the prerequisites as well. Fantastic. I think um, just to anybody else, um, feel free to pop a question into the chat box, but um, I can see that we haven't got anything else in at the moment. So um, I'd just like to thank Cassandra for this uh, wonderful presentation. Um, I certainly learned a lot about enrollment and I'm sure um, our attendees today will walk away having um, had a great experience and learn a little bit more around the process. In terms of a follow up, if students are kind of struggling with enrollment, your advice is to come and contact you at the Nucleus in the first instance and obviously to get in contact with their faculty. Is that right? Yes, get, it, uh, get in touch with a student advisor um, and that can be uh, from your faculty team, but we've, we've got advisors from every faculty sitting in the Nucleus, so you can always speak with someone um, for the specific advice. Um, and we've just got on the next slide, we can just put up the, the contact details um, sure. of how to contact us at the Nucleus. No problem. Perfect, so all the contact details are here as well. Is there a specific page on the UNSW uh, website that um, these? Yes, yeah, so if you just search UNSW Nucleus, you can find all the contact details there and it's got also links. So if you'd like to submit a web form, Brilliant. Um, you can follow it there. Excellent. OK, so thanks everyone for uh, attending today. Um, I'll close now uh, the session um, for the attendees. I know everyone hates kind of filling in evaluation uh, forms, but I will be sending on some evaluation forms and they really make a big difference in terms of how we tweak the model to make it more relevant for you, because ultimately we want to be able to get excellent information to you at the right time. 
So that having said, thank you all for attending and I'll close on today's session.